Okay, this is the final uh, video on the analysis of propellers. I was just going to look at propeller blade theory, blade element theory. So if we have a propeller, um, we're going to take a small element of it here. As it rotates, we're looking at the cross section here. As it rotates, the uh, rotational speed is going to be omega r. Velocity due to sorry, velocity due to rotation speed is omega r. The aircraft will have a forward velocity v. And that will give us a resultant VR. Um, as the air comes in over the propeller, uh, there will be an induced velocity, uh, VI, and that's it there. So the overall resultant velocity will be this uh, VR0. So let's label the angles. So let's call that phi, call that theta. Uh, call that phi zero, which is phi plus theta, and this is the angle of attack, uh, alpha. And this angle here, um, from the planar rotation out to the chord line, that will be beta, the blade angle. If that's phi naught here, then this angle here is, is also phi naught. So this is our blade element that we're looking at, and as it rotates around, the axis of rotation is going to map out this area, and that area is 2 pi r dr. And in some of the equations, we're going to talk about the area of this element here, which is the chord length c, and multiplied by the width here dr, and the change in the, the radius of the propeller. Okay, so if the air goes through, then the propeller will generate some uh, lift, so small element to lift, that will um, be broken into um, torque, which will angle acting at angle phi zero to the lift. Sorry, tr I should have said thrust. Some thrust angle uh, acting at this angle, and some torque. Um, drag, if you like, the lift or torque to the propeller, torque acting uh, in this direction. So, I know the lift is half um, coefficient of lift rho s v squared. That's the general equation for lift. So, for this small section, the lift will be, uh, well, the area s is c times dr, and the velocity is this vr0. So that will be our, our lift. Therefore, I can say that the thrust is cosine phi. Okay, so I'm looking at this guy here. Cosine phi times the lift minus uh, coefficient of drag times sine phi. So this would be phi here. So this vector here would be made up of this component and uh, a vertical component. So the total thrust in this forward direction will be uh, this guy minus whatever this factor here is. Okay. So if we substitute in for the uh, for the lift, um, I can see that the thrust is half CL rho C V dr V rho squared cosine phi minus E sine phi. This epsilon here is the ratio of, of drag to lift, coefficient of drag to the coefficient of lift. That's what it is for this element on this propeller. Uh, if there are B propellers, so it could be two propeller blades, three propeller blades, uh, that the total thrust will be increased by uh, this factor. Okay. We also know that the mass of the air uh, from the continuity equation is rho sv. So if this is the propeller, the air is blown through, then the thrust is rho s v naught, so the velocity here at this point, times the slipstream velocity minus the free stream velocity, okay, so the, the, the acceleration, the change in velocity. So the mass of air then is rho, while the s is 2 pi r dr, so this is the area, like I said, mapped out by the disk, this section of the disk as it goes around, 2 pi r dr, and the velocity, uh, v uh, 0, well, the velocity blade going through here is V 
plus cosine phi times v i. So v plus v i times cosine phi. So that's this vector here. So we have the density, we have the area, and now we have the velocity air function. So if I substitute that back in there, sorry, um, I know uh, from uh, the fluid momentum theory, the very first video I did on this subject, that uh, this velocity here from this point to that point is the average of the slipstream velocity plus the free stream velocity. So, um, multiplying across by 2, and then uh, bringing the v's to one side, I can get vs uh, minus v is equal to 2vi cosine phi 0. Right. So that's this expression here. Now I can say what the trust is. <laughs> I can say the change in trust is uh, mass times acceleration. So that's the mass from the continuity equation, and this is the uh, acceleration from the Freud momentum equation. So I now have two equations for trust. Uh, I have this one and this equation here. So the obvious thing to do is to make them equal to each other. Okay, so there's from the momentum equation, there's from the blade element. If I divide both sides by rho dr and 2 cosine phi, that will give me this. And if I bring this to one side, I have an expression for the induced velocity. Now at this stage, if I think that this is very small, uh, so the tan of a small angle is a small number, and then if I'm talking about a blade that has a good lift to drag ratio, so the coefficient of lift is a lot greater than the coefficient of drag, then this part here really becomes insignificant and I can get rid of it. So I can say that the induced velocity approximates to that. Okay, so we go back to our uh, drawing again. I have my induced velocity. Um, let's look at this angle here. So if this theta here is very small, okay, then I can approximately say that the sine of phi zero, so sine of this angle here, is equal to the opposite over adjacent, so opposite over hypotenuse, sorry, which is V plus VI cosine phi zero over the hypotenuse, which is VR zero. So I have an expression here for the sine of phi zero. But I know that the sine of phi zero is the sine of phi plus the sine of theta, which is really a, a sine of A plus B function. Right, so from log tables, the sine of A plus B, or in this case phi plus theta, is equal to sine phi cosine theta plus cosine phi sine theta. However, if theta is very small, then the cosine theta is going to be one-ish, and the sine of theta is really equal to theta itself. It's so small. So I can say that this guy reduces to this. So, sine of phi plus theta, which is equal to the sine of this angle, is equal to um, sine theta plus omega cosine theta. And we've already seen that sine of this angle was equal to uh, V plus Vi cosine phi zero all over Vr zero. So I can substitute that back in here. So there's my induced velocity. That's it where I've just stripped um, this expression out to one side. I've shown that that expression is equal to those on the previous slide. So there we are. My induced velocity is now equal to this. Okay. Now, um, if I'm looking at theta here, 
this is the right angle. This is the right angle here. I know it doesn't look it, but let's assume this is the right angle. Then I can say the tan of the angle is equal to opposite over uh, adjacent. So tan of the angle uh, is going to be approximately equal to this. As this is very small, it's going to be approximately equal to theta. So I have a value for uh, vi. So if I divide vi by vro, I'll get theta. So I take this expression, get rid of the vro, I have an expression for the angle theta. Right, the solidity ratio is the ratio of the area of the blades to the area of the disc. So the area of the blades, well, uh, let's see be the mean aerodynamic chord or the radius so this you know area here this area here is uh, CR and the area of the circle that I described with pi r squared so these cancel out I'm going to introduce a factor here for x let x the ratio of you know this length r to the overall radius r um, so I can say I'm just taking this guy here, so there's B and C, B and C, and pi and R, but we're really substituting it for this. I can get rid of these guys and put in uh, sigma. There's my 8x, there's the 8. And the coefficient of lift, I've changed that to be equal to the slope of a line times beta, which is this blade angle, minus phi, which is this, minus this angle, uh, minus theta, which is this angle. Um, where do I get that from? Well, you know, if I have a coefficient of lift and I have an angle of attack, and uh, the coefficient of lift is going to be equal to, you know, whatever the slope of this line is times the angle of attack. So that's where that, uh, that's where this guy comes from. So there's the alpha, that's the angle of attack, and this is the slope of, of this line. Okay, so I have theta roughly equal to that, uh, multiplying across by this fa function here, gives me this expression, but fortunately this is so small that I can neglect the square values, so I can just look at this part of it here, and minimizing that, I'm just stuck for time now, it's going to go through really, really quick, uh, is theta is approximately equal to this this factor here. Right, vr0 is equal to vr, so this time cosine phi, sorry, cosine theta, but vr is equal to um, omega r times cosine theta. Just look from this side, just putting those back in there. I have an expression vr o squared, and you might remember back that's what we had for the, the trust. So I'm going to slip that in there. So there's my equation for trust. That's what I have for vr o squared, and I'm going to substitute that in. So now I have an expression for the trust of the propeller, and I can work it out because I know what theta is is approximately equal to that. I know what phi is, it's approximately equal to that. And I know what phi zero is because it's those two angles. So now from these three equations I have enough uh, information to calculate how much thrust the propeller is producing. And if I integrate that across the whole length of the propeller blade from zero out to r, I'll be able to determine how much trust the propeller is creating and that's it